Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This year we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of your favorite TV show. Once again, we have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We support them to become more productive, get better yields, and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore what we eat, where we get it, and how we can cook it in cleaner, faster, healthier, and cheaper ways. And at the same time, increase family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice. While also learn from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Dear viewers, I'd like to let you know that all the filming you're about to see was done before the outbreak of the coronavirus in Kenya and Tanzania. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are on Lake Victoria and we are traveling to Homer Bay. That's right. Tony, did you know that Lake Victoria is the second largest freshwater lake in the world and the biggest in the whole of Africa? Are you impressed? I am. But I hear that our farmer is even more impressive and we want to make him the best farmer in Africa. Oh yes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Homer Bay, here we go. This week we are visiting Michael Odada. Michael is married to Benta and they have four children, two girls and two boys. Hey. How are you? We are fine. fine. Yes. Show us your shamba. Shamba is this side. Right. Okay. Okay. okay, let's go, let's go. Okay. We'll Mami. see you later. We'll see you. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Michael's shoulders around the farm. Cows are a great passion for Michael. He loves to grow sweet potatoes too, and it's harvest time. As we toured the farm, Michael's wife Benta went back to help carry out the sacks of maize from the storage. The maize needs to be shelled so it can dry. It's so much quicker and easier using a machine than by hand. And here we are, rejoining Benta and the maize. Michael, you have a great farm. Thank you, Tony. Yes. I love Osele the cow. What's the I meaning love. of Osele? Yes. Osele is our MP. Ah. Oh, you named your cow to the MP. Because oh, he's strong. He's strong. He must be a very good MP. <laughs> All right. right. Anyway, how can Shamba Ship Up help you? In case there is no rain, uh -huh. we will not go get good harvest. If the sweet potatoes are, are doing well, mm -hmm. the rain also contribute a, mm -hmm. a lot. So Benta, we are on yes. you now. Yes. How mm -hmm. is the temperature in the kitchen? How is the climate in the kitchen? It's the temperature in the kitchen, sometimes uh, the kitchen is smoky when I'm using firewood. You get a problem when you are uh, lighting the, the food, fire. The food uh -huh. delays. So uh -huh. the food, yeah. 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 food so delays. So Mze gets very hungry as yes. he's waiting for the food. Yes. Yes. A hungry Not man is an angry man. Yes, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Not to worry. Mm -hmm. When yes. you see Shamba Shape up here, we come with experts. Yes. All right? Mm -hmm. So kindly allow us to go to work and then we'll meet you later. Yes. All right. Okay. We'll see you later. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, our first expert today is Tobias Muga from International Potato Center. I have brought him to meet our farmer Michael. It's harvesting time for Michael's orange flesh sweet potatoes. These are also known locally as Rabuon and Guache. Even though Michael gets a big crop of sweet potatoes, last season they fetched a low price at market. Bad handling of orange flesh sweet potatoes after harvesting can lead to huge losses of up to 50% in some cases. So, Tobias is here to show Michael the best way to handle harvested sweet potatoes so he can get the best price at the market. And here we are. Oh, this looks interesting. I wonder what's going on here. But before we find out, I want to know how badly Michael lost out last season. Yes, now yeah. Michael, how bad was it? It was uh, about 35% to 40 35 percent to 40. 40. That's serious, yeah. isn't it? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, what should farmers look out for? Yes, one, before a, a farmer uh, harvests these crops, he or she must be very sure that uh, the farm has taken uh, the exact number of uh, months, yes. that is like uh, five months, so that uh, the roots they would be getting are the right ones. Aha, uh -huh. because, yes. because what happens if the farmer harvests when it's too early? you will end up getting very small roots which will not fetch much like in the market. One. Like, uh, Give us an example. 
Ah. Yes, like uh, when a farmer harvests when they are too, uh, they are a little bit too early, mm -hmm. then they will get those kind of roots, very small. So these will fetch nothing at the market. This will fetch nothing at the market. Nobody wants this. Nobody wants this. Yeah. So now, what about if a farmer waited for too long to harvest? Yeah. Maybe he's thinking if I if I harvest later, I might be able to get a good price. What happens? Too late, they will also get uh, the roots which are too big mm -hmm. and may not fetch good price. Can cause, we see one? Because like uh, this one here. This is a too late, it's wow. too big, but inside is also spongy. But it looks beautiful to me. Yeah, it looks beautiful, but inside is spongy. Yeah. Wow. So timing is very important. Timing, timing is, is very important. important. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's important the sweet potatoes are not too big and not too small. So harvesting should be done at five months. Now, what about after harvesting? This is a curing. After harvesting, you leave them here for about two hours yes. so that uh, the skin gets hardened ah. so that the peeling off does not occur so much. Mm -hmm. yes. Do you need to cover them at any particular time? Well, when they, they are under the shade, you don't need brew. But when they are not under the shade, when they are open, when they are open uh, we would use uh, the, the vines, the cuttings, to, to, cover, to them. cover them so that uh, they don't get sunburn. Because mm -hmm. the moment they get sunburn, they become black, the, the roots. Ah. Yes. Uh, after consolidating them here, uh, a farmer would sort them into groups. Yes. One, the grade one. That is a grade one. That is a grade Which one. Which means it's the good one. Exactly. Uh -huh. And then the other one will be the, the, the ones that have been damaged. Let's have a look at it. So these ones are kept aside. Also. These ones are kept aside. Those ones have been damaged. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one also happens when uh, people don't use ox plow, when people use hoe or jembes. Uh -huh. Yes. Were you getting this also? Yes, when we were using the nini. Jembe. The jembes. Yeah. What are we you using now? I'm, I'm using a plow. A plow? Yeah. And you can see the difference. Like, very, very big difference. Very because big of difference. The wow. Now, for a farmer, this one fetches very little. And uh, sometimes uh, a trader comes and leaves you with this. We cannot take. So now, yeah, from here, yes. what does a farmer do? After sorting, now we will now go to the washing. What is it doing? Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey. Oh, yeah. What are you doing? What are you? Stop, stop, stop. Thank you. This is the old system that we've been using to clean our sweet potatoes. Really? Yes, and uh, it is uh, an old tradition. We no longer encourage this. Why, why shouldn't farmers step on them? They will uh, get br bruised. They will be breaking them. And then it is not also hygienic. So which is the best way of doing it? So the best way of doing them is to use a hand, not just stepping on them. Mm -hmm. Yes, the best way is this one here. Uh, ah. where you find the old mama cleaning them gently, rinsing and putting the, the cleaned one there. So, so do you recommend farmers to wash all of them? They can wash depending on the market outlet as the market demands. What is the danger of washing them and they are not going for market? Washing reduces the shelf life. If they are washed, they it takes about one week. If you cannot get a market or if you have them in the market, they will go but they will start rotting. Uh-huh. Yes. So which is the proper way of storing your sweet potatoes? The proper way that we carry through the cooperative is use of crates, mm -hmm. like this one here. Why crates? Crates is because of the aeration, uh, the spoilage is also reduced, and then they, they don't break. We just put them in a crate like this, slowly. Ah. Slowly. Mm -hmm. They don't get bruised. Aeration is also very high there. Like that? Yeah, like that. And now you can take them to the market. We now can take them to the market. Yes. This is good. Michael, exactly. yeah, true. can you compare this with what you are doing earlier before? The, what we were doing before was mm. so bad because we, we were stepping on the food, peeling off the skins. Mm. It cannot stay for, uh, for two for weeks. For a long time. Yeah. So and you're also putting them in sacks. In sacks. So oh, there like is no air circulation. All right. Yeah. This is good. If you grow quality orange flesh sweet potatoes, you can sell them at a fresh roots market or to a processor for a better price. Now I'm on the way to meet Dorothy Otieno from Nyalore Impact. Michael's wife, Benta, has three stoves for cooking, and all of them are a danger to her health. And they're expensive to use as well. Dorothy is inspecting the first, Mama Benta's three-stone fire. Let's see what other stoves she uses inside the kitchen. This is a lovely kitchen, Benta. Yes. It's big, it's spacious, 
Huh? And I can see some lovely items here. What are these? Jiko, uh -huh. which I use for, for cooking. cooking. So you use charcoal on this one? Yeah, I uh -huh. use charcoal. Okay. Yes. And this one? Yeah. Uh, what It uses fuel. Which one? Kerosene. Kerosene. Yes. All right. And as I was coming in, I found uh, the three stone. Yeah. You also use that one? Yeah, I use firewood when picking with that three stones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happens when you're cooking? Too much smoke. Mm -hmm. Start coughing. You mm -hmm. start sneezing. Mm -hmm. You have a running nose. Yes. You are crying and yeah, you are making yeah, food. Especially mm -hmm. when the the firewood is not uh, dry. It's not dry mm -hmm. enough All right. for cooking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is why I asked Dorothy to come. None of these three stoves is safe. Three stone fires are very dangerous, even when they are used outside. Children can fall into them, and the smoke is one of the biggest killers of women and children in Africa. The charcoal jiko lets off smoke, some of it invisible, which makes it even more dangerous. It can poison you without the smoke to warn you. And the kerosene stove is so expensive to use. Plus, when it falls over, it can cause a very dangerous fire. Many homes have been destroyed by fire from a kerosene stove, with many people badly hurt. Uh, today we have a stove that uses one of the cleanest means of cooking and that is gas. All right, yeah. so I think it's about time we saw this uh, wonderful stove. Tony! Strong man! Of course you're a strong man. And yeah. voila! It's all right. Oops. There you go, Dorothy. Yes. yes. There yeah. you go. Wow, wow. wow. This wow. looks amazing. So here, Benta, we have an LPG gas stove. Mm -hmm. And from today, Benta and family have said goodbye to the smoke emission, to the dangers of the paraffin, mm. to the painful chest, the teary eyes, the running nose, and visiting the doctors every day. Mm. Because here we have gas that cooks very clean with no emissions at all. Mm. Yes. And do you think uh, this uh, stove cannot uh, cause burning in the house? As you can see, Benta, this stove is very stable, mm. so you can comfortably make ugali for 20 people mm. or even 30 people on this stove because it is very stable. All the heat is concentrated on the inside, unlike the three stone that you're using that can cause accident, especially the small children when they're running and playing around. Mm -hmm. With this stove, you have all the energy concentrated inside on the mm. cooking pot, mm. yes. It is very safe, even for a child who will pass by when you're using stove, it mm. cannot cause any burns. You said it's very stable, so does it mean it's heavy? Or even if maybe I want to travel, can I be able to carry it? It is also a portable stove. You are washing your clothes, you're cooking your food, mm. you want to watch your food, how it is cooking. You can always carry the stove wherever you are. This 5-in-1 multi-fuel Jiko can also use solid fuel, but gas is a much better option. To fill a 6 kilogram canister will cost around 1,000 to 1,200 shillings and would last a month when cooking for a family of 5 to 8 using gas only. If you want to set up your own biodigester to turn your cow manure into fuel for this cook stove, you can. Setting up a small household system can be paid in installments of 1,700 shillings over two years. Once you've paid off your system, cooking is free. How much do you spend cooking every month? Maybe these are cheaper, quicker and healthier solutions for you. Most of the farmers are dairy cattle keepers and out of that they have waste that they could use to make biogas which mm -hmm. could still be used on this stove. Yes, after installation, mm -hmm. it has zero cost because the waste is on their farm. Oh, nice. Yes. Nice. The 5 in 1 multi fuel Jiko is so easy to use. If you're using the LPG gas canister, first connect the gas tube. On the cylinder, turn on the gas supply until it is fully open. You can regulate the amount of gas you need using the knob on the stove. Light the stove and that's it. It just takes seconds. The gas burns hot too, so you need less to cook than when using solid fuel or kerosene. Foods such as beans and pulses and rice cook around 10% faster, so you save on time and on fuel. And there's no smoke. Before you know it, you have a delicious meal. Cleaner, cheaper and faster.
Oh. Caro. Yes. What do you think of that? Hmm. Very educative. Mm -hmm. Straight to the point. Yes. Very insightful. Our farmers are happy getting all the expert advice. I don't even know what more to add, but there's still more to come. Top tips for managing cows. And what to do if disaster strikes. But first, the desert locust is a very serious pest and can destroy your crops. Locust adults can eat their own weight every day. There are three groups of locusts you should look out for. The young locust is black and cannot fly. They move in big groups called bands, like this. The young adult locust is red and looks like this. The mature locusts are yellow and look like this. Be careful not confuse locusts with grasshoppers. Locusts usually move in groups of hundreds. Solitary grasshoppers or crickets are usually all alone, sitting on leaves or in your house. The adult grasshopper has long antlers, while locusts have short ones. Solitary grasshoppers are not a problem. These are the areas that are currently affected by the desert locust in Kenya. High density areas in red show where lots of locusts have been reported, so there is a high risk of the pest damaging crops badly now. Medium density areas in orange show where some locusts have been reported and there is some risk of locusts damaging crops now and it could get worse. And low density areas in yellow is where you have low risk of locust attacks. That means little or no damage is being caused now. The threat of locusts is very high in northern and some central counties. Samburu is at very high risk. Turkana, Marsabit, Isiolo and Laikipia are at high risk. Swarms of locusts have also been spotted in Elgeo Marakwet, Baringo, Wajir and Tana River. These counties are also at risk of having locusts. Taita Taveta, Kajiado, Makueni and Kitui probably have many more locusts that have not been reported. However, local authorities have teams that can spray the locusts with special chemicals that will control them. That is why it is very important that you get in touch with our hotline to tell us whether you have or have not seen locusts in your area. That's right, we also want to know if you have not seen any locusts. Tell us if you have seen the black hoppers, the red immature locusts or the yellow mature locusts. Here's what to do. Send the word locust to 21606 and we will get in touch with you. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Homa Bay and we are visiting Michael and Benta Odada. We've seen how to harvest sweet potatoes. And how to save money in the kitchen. But we also want to find out about cows. And what to do if the rains don't come. And with no time to waste. Tony, let's get back to work. Let's get back to work, Caro. We have seen how Michael uses cows on his farm to help with plowing, especially when it comes to harvest time for his sweet potatoes. But he also keeps cows for milk too. I want to see if I can give him some basic tips to help improve his milk yield. Michael. Uh, uh, yes. There you are. Yes, yes, yes. So these are your cows? Yes. Ah, how many are they? I'm having about uh, 15. 15? Yes. Wow, and how many are you milking? I'm milking four. How is the milk? Uh, the milk, I uh, don't get much mm. because uh, one cow I can get uh, three liters in the morning, yes. then two in the evening. So have you ever thought of improving your breed? I've uh, been thinking of, of, of that, mm -hmm. but I've not uh, managed. To improve his milk yield, Michael has to make sure he has the best dairy herd. Otherwise, all his other efforts will be wasted. Artificial insemination, or AI, lets you choose the right bulls to improve your herd. Using a clear CRV catalog from Coopers, Michael can choose bull semen from a cow that has produced calves with big strong udders and sturdy hind legs. With each birth cycle, you can increase the amount of milk your cow can give. And in only six generations, you can have a high value herd. So, housing, yes. because you're going to improve on your breed. Yes. 
how are you going to construct your structure? Would you know how to? I don't know, but I've already put some poles yes. so that I can just make a shed. It is very important yes. to have the right measurements, the right direction of which your cow shelter is going to face. Yes. So they need to be in one place, zero grazing. Zero grazing. Because if you are going to improve your grade and you want great cows, they shouldn't move yes. a lot. Yes. Because in moving a lot, yes. they use a lot of energy. Yes. And in using a lot of energy, they will give you less milk. Okay. In that cattle shed, what will you put in? A uh, place to milk the... The, the, milking parlor. the milking parlor, wonderful. Then you, you need a very nice feeding trough yes. where the cows will feed from. Will feed from. And water. Water. To get the most milk from his cows, Michael needs to control the health and hygiene of his cows. And to do this, a zero grazing unit can make things much easier. <laughs> well done, well yeah. done. <laughs> let's, have a good, let's have a look at your cows some more. Yeah. All right. So, that's my starter tips for Michael. Using AI improves your dairy herd so you have cows that can produce a lot of milk. And make sure the cows are properly managed by using a zero grazing unit. All this and you'll have much improved milk production. The coronavirus is spread when you come into contact with sneezing or coughing droplets from an infected person. Good social behavior can stop the virus from spreading. Stay at home and avoid places with many people. Generally, keep two meter distance from other people. Do the following. One, wash your hands properly with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, at least 10 times a day. Two, avoid touching your face. Three, if you have no tissue, sneeze or cough into your elbow and not your hand. 4. Wash and iron used handkerchiefs regularly. 5. Clean and disinfect surfaces such as your phone, tables, light switches and doorknobs daily. 6. When using money, avoid using cash. Use mobile money or bank cards as much as possible. And 7. Boost your immune system by eating fruits and vegetables several times a day. Together and with good behavior, we can prevent the virus from spreading. Well, what do you think of that, Carol? Quite educative. Well, let's get back to work. Let's go. <laughs> Time for our final expert of the day. Tony tells me Michael is very fond of his cows, with Osele being a farm favorite, and that he loves his sweet potatoes too. So you want to find out what can be done if any kind of disaster happens to Michael's crops or his livestock. And we think farm insurance could be just what's needed. So I've invited Oduk Kopar, an insurance expert, to come and give us some advice. So Michael, you're telling Tony that uh, climate has been giving you issues. Yes. Yes. Uh, we are having a problem when we plant uh, our sweet potatoes, when there's a lot of, of, of rain. The, the roots cannot make any well. Uh -huh. Secondly, when we have just drought, uh -huh. we don't get anything at all. Uh, you said you've never tried the agricultural insurance. Yeah, I have not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is agricultural insurance? Now, agriculture insurance is the insurance that now covers his crops in the field uh -huh. uh, and also his livestock. There are even those who are keeping fish. Uh -huh. uh, yes, yeah. uh, there is also insurance for, for aquaculture. Let's take, for example, you want to insure your sweet potatoes, mm. yeah? What procedures should Michael take? Uh, the first thing is you identifying that what are the risks that you're exposed to. You mentioned drought yeah. and you also mentioned excess rainfall. Excess rainfall. Yes. Mm. yes. So once that is done, an expert like myself now comes to your farm, we'll get to know where is your farm located and uh, which season do you plant. And uh, what you're supposed to pay is determined by the historical rainfall patterns for that particular location. For example, in Kabondo here, you receive more rainfall than those who are living in, uh, in Bondo, for example. Yes. yes. So the person who lives in Bondo is more exposed to the drought mm -hmm. than yourself. Yes. So you find the person in Bondo will pay more, more. Uh, in, as compared to yourself. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, to take out insurance for either crops or livestock, follow these simple steps. One, contact an insurance representative. Two, a vet or agronomist will come and assess the value of your crops or livestock. 
Three, the insurance company will quote you a cost to have them covered, typically for cows, that's three and a half percent of their value. Four, you pay the premium, and that's it, you are insured. How about on the side of the animals? There must be a veterinary doctor. So the doctor will have to assess the condition of the animal mm -hmm. and fill in the forms. Yes. For example, there are diseases like foot and mouth disease that you know you'll be asked whether the animal was vaccinated. Just in case there is a, a scourge that has come, will your animal be already protected? The doctor will assess the age of the animal, which breed. Yeah. Then the veterinary doctor also will also help you in the valuation of the animal. And the premium for livestock insurance is 3.5%, the value of the animal. Mm -hmm. So assuming Osele is valued at 50,000, mm -hmm. then you as the farmer will be able to pay 1,750 and that is the premium for the whole year okay. yes and if your animal dies against the risks that are uh, are identified uh -huh. when you are signing up the forms uh -huh. then you'll be able to be compensated up to 90 percent the value of that animal all right is. and what if indeed something happens michael you'll be required one to ensure mm -hmm. that you will notify the insurer within 24 hours yes. you can make a phone call but it is important that you follow that with a, a written a written document a written document to to affirm the phone call as ian went on to explain this is how to make a claim for lost harvest or damaged livestock notify your insurer of your loss this should be within 24 hours of the loss happening two your insurer will send a loss assessor to value your loss three submit a claim for your loss four your insurer will look at your claim and provide you an offer to compensate the loss five if you agree with the offer the insurer will pay your claim within two to three weeks and to our farmers at home insurance works insurance is reliable and other than making you rest easy Insurance makes you work hard because you're going to practice good agricultural practices. And above all, you're always on toes. Always make sure, in case anything happens to your crops, to your animals, notify your insurer on time so that you can get your compensation right on time. Ah, wow, nice. what a day, what a shape up. I'm very much thankful what you people have taught us will remain in our, our mind. We will use them on the farm mm -hmm. so that we can achieve mm -hmm. the right products uh -huh. we want. I'm oh, very yes. happy with you. Yes. Ah, yes. Thank you so much. Oh, and yes. so, Tony, our work here ah. is done. And so, we'll see you in the next Shamba! Thank you.